say it again. Yay, there he is. There he is. Okay, now can I? There it goes. Okay. Ah, oh, Wait, I can't hear you. Here I'm. Here I'm. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, there you go. I'm back. Yay! Yeah. How are you? It works good. Hello, so hello, glad Kenny. you were able. I, I was struggling. <laughs> nah, it's all good. Time <laughs> difference. Time difference. Hope you're yeah. having a good. It was a night time there, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What time yeah. is it there? Uh, it's 11, 12 past 11, so a.m. now. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and yeah. get started because I know that you are kind of pressed for time. Um, yeah, I'm just here. I'm, uh, I'm about to teach, so I'm just waiting. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so I'm just like, it's all good. We made Yay. it happen. That's good. So first and foremost, thank you guys, everybody, for joining us. We're super excited to have you guys on today with us. Um, we are joined by the amazing Mayel. So if you see his name, that is how you pronounce it. I asked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yes, um, so you see his IG is where is Mayel. And we're very, very excited. Um, he actually reached out to me um, on IG. Um, I think I liked one of your videos or your pictures or something. And he was like, I absolutely love, you know, what you're doing and everything yeah. like that. So I literally asked him, like, would you please come on? And he so graciously agreed. Um, so today we are talking about, you know, black men and the stigma behind mental wellness and, you know, just all over mental illness because I don't know why, but like, Guys feel like they don't need help or counsel or whatever the case may be. So we want to just kind of open up the conversation and just kind of talk about that. So uh, me and yeah. Tina both have questions for you. So we'll kind of go back and forth, do interview style. And then when you have to jump off, just let us know. Okay. Yeah. It's easy. Okay. So um, Tina, you want to go first? No, nope, you go first. Okay. <laughs> okay. So my question is, um, first, I'm going to start off with a definition, okay? I have a definition of sensitive. I have um, the definition means quick to detect or respond to slight changes, signals, or influences. So keeping that in mind, why do you think it is that we teach our young Black boys to stop being sensitive? And why is sensitivity such a bad thing? I guess in African American like um African culture, it's like the whole the man has to be ways to take care of the family and provide, so he can't be very sensitive. Because in Africa, that's the woman's job to raise the kids, right? Mm -hmm. So the the dad naturally doesn't have that physic like that emotional connection to the child because he's just working and coming home and providing. So the mom usually has all that emotional connection. But, I feel, I feel it's a big thing how Africans are raised, especially if you like come because I was I, I was born in West Africa, but, mm -hmm. and then moved to Australia when I was nine. Mm -hmm. So and the culture switch is um, big difference from like being raised in Africa to coming to Australia. Mm -hmm. So it's a big difference. Obviously, because my mom's like she's white, so I'm half Australian, half African. So it's, oh. it's another big flip on top of that as well, where my upbringing was very, very unique, mm -hmm. especially in Africa. So in in that case, I can talk from what I saw in my point of view from my dad and mom's side. Mm -hmm. So that's why I believe anyway. But do you believe that? So this is more, like maybe this is more on the American side, but like, I know a lot of women um, will say like to their young boys or something like toughen up or like, you know, don't, don't act like a girl or, yeah, yeah, don't like it. you know, stuff like that. And it's like, yeah. at some point, are you desensitizing boys? Meaning that, you know, for like, for instance, I have a daughter, so my daughter, you know, I'll tell her, you know, like, how are you feeling? Like, you know, what, what's the thought process behind what you're doing? I don't necessarily, and this is not a diss on anybody, but I don't see a lot of moms of boys who are telling their boys like, okay, well, how do you feel about that? And if you have a feeling that is not masculine, so to speak, is that bad? And why do we view that as bad or that it should be different for a girl than it is for a boy? 
girls and boys yeah. have the same emotions. You get sad just yeah. like I get sad. You get mad just like I get mad. So why is it that if I ask you, like, well, how do you feel about this? Like, what is your true emotional you know, connection to this, why does that make you less of a man or being a punk? Because you show sensitivity. Because you're crying or something. <laughs> it's, okay it's okay for boys to cry too. Like men cry, you know, we just right. don't see it. It's like, I feel it, that's, that's the topic that needs to be brought up, which I love that you do that. You ask, how do you feel? Which mm -hmm. everyone should instead of when, you, like if you have a boy and he cries and goes, oh, stop being a girl, you should just be like, it's okay to cry and invite them to, to make him feel comfortable, it's okay to cry. Because at a young age, when, you, when you're doing this, stop, stop being a girl, stop crying, you know, you're a man, all these words, right. you're putting in their minds that it's not okay to cry. Right. So that's when we grow up older. Like, as, when you're a man, you start, like, suppressing all those emotions. And, and, and then if you, women, like, all oh, men don't have emotions, they, they do, they just don't show it. And they've just had so much practice of hiding it. Right. So it's harder for them to open up. But I like that. Is, but it's something we have to work out. Like it's just communication, like just really communicating, especially when you've grown up like that and been very aware of like what's happening and why it's happening and just also wanting to to express trying. Especially I see guys would talk more about these things to like their women like their girlfriends or their women they seem because their women likes to ask and they're breaking so compared to like other guys they won't be like yo bro how you feeling like you good like like yeah we good you know like we just talk about like stuff like that like boys but like, yeah but i'm good yeah just see i'm like how's you and your girl like everything good like stuff like that try to get that like more connection they just wear boys and we go out on the weekends and right. all that and we party so like yo let's get a connection like mm -hmm. you live with guys you live with guys like for years as housemates <laughs> And you don't know anything about what's going on. You don't know. You just know that's his girlfriend. You don't know what the girlfriend does. But you need to, like, get invested. So right. Can, like, and right. build that real deep connection, mm -hmm. I feel. But Agreed. I like that. Just, uh, yes. So, um, as Ebony was kind of talking about, you know, how some moms, you know, tell their boys not to feel and all that stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about how you grew up? Was like counseling brought up? Was, was, was it okay to go to counseling? What was there a stigma with counseling or even uh, mentioning that you might have a mental illness at all? Yeah. So I, I grew up in, in Africa where like my mom's wife, she was very, she had to be even more tough because she was like the white lady in, like, in the African world. And then we moved to Australia. Mm -hmm. So it's like in Africa, we're getting called white. We didn't know why. And then we come to Australia and then we get called black but on my mom's side is white he so and then having to switch languages because my first language is French and then coming to a new world where we're around my mom's family where they don't want you to speak French because Australians um, they think you're talking about them if you're talking another language mm. so they're like no it's talk English here in Australia we're like yeah but like we just came here and we we're lucky enough to study English in in, in Africa so mm -hmm. we knew a little bit a little bit but with that, counseling was, at, going through school, we did like ESL, which is like English as your second language. So yep. throughout there, they kind of, they don't really provide like counseling as much as they do now. Now they really provide like counseling at schools, which I see is, is great. It's like, it's great. Mm -hmm. They really like counseling is open. Even though workplaces in Australia, they offer that. Some, not every place, but some places. They're like, yeah, it's in this coming talk, which is great. I have some friends that work in like corporate jobs. So they're open like that. But he, in Australia, like, people are very, it's getting, like, the new norm for people to be, like, on antidepressant pills and seeing therapists. So, they get, yeah, it's getting more open. I was just like, what? You on, on, like, antidepressant pills? Like, a lot of people. And then they're just more open, which is, like, for me, because I come from, like, the, like, the outback, like, whoop, whoop, like, the country. And mm -hmm. I live in the Melbourne city now. So, <laughs> and because Melbourne city is so multicultural and mm -hmm. so ahead, that mm -hmm. is normal here. But if I, when I go back, and I'm going back next week to um, the countryside, like, if you do that there, like, it's, it's, it's a bit different. Mm -hmm. It's not as open yet because it's still the countryside. Right. It's very, like, still Aussie, Aussie, like, tough guy, all that. Mm -hmm. but, but, but Melbourne is getting more open to that, which is, like, great. So people, like, 
instead of the you know the average when you go to someone or oh, how's your day going and so I was like yeah great thanks and just the generic answer they start to but actually no it's not that great this happened this I go fine I'm not feeling that great I'm great so they're actually being more honest which I love because it gives wow. it gives it gives context and you can actually communicate and build on that and just like hey how's your day going yeah good thanks yourself okay bye like that generic conversation mm-hmm. chili mm-hmm. chatter which you don't build anything right so I feel like Melbourne is growing I don't I don't know it's because we're going through this whole like it's like very vegan hippie kind of thing in in melbourne area now is there artist mm-hmm. yeah i feel like well my comparison is sydney's like new york very fast paced and then and melbourne very la like oh, okay you know, artists and all that people to come here to try to make it and stuff mm-hmm. so but anyway the people i've been hanging out like i feel like they're yeah very more open with those whole going to tell but it's like it's, it's crazy i was just like okay for me it's still new you know okay. so i'm still trying to work on myself <laughs> all, with all that but okay, i don't yeah. know how it is in i don't know how it is in america if people are open like that yeah and we're black men it, it's just not very yeah so- it, you don't talk about it and you kind of keep it inside and like you said if you do talk about it you talk to it but about it with your you know significant other you know yeah. and, and the part but the part about that too is like it's not bad to talk about it with your significant other but unless your significant other is licensed and or yeah. assist you you know in whatever it is you're going through yeah it, it, you're not getting help you're just saying what's you're getting off your chest, whatever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I hope that's not so annoying. Is that too loud? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. They just started playing music, so I hope it wasn't distracting. No, you're okay. Um, okay. So the question is, um, I'm trying to think. Okay. So I put, um, why should black men focus more on self-love and self-care? Well... I, I take a book from women. Um, women for me are like, the, they, they work so hard. They have kids and they're working like three jobs and they still have time to be organized and everywhere. But they also take time to self-love. You know, the pamper, they get pedicure, manicures. Men don't really do those things. Like, I'm like, man, I've never been to, like, I have a lot of women friends and I went to a pedicure and manicure with one one time. I was like, whoa, this is amazing. This is what it feels like. <laughs> But like, <laughs> we, we don't do that. Like, I was like, I'm like, so nigga, why can't I do that? Why can't I do that? You know? Like, why can't I spend a bit of money on myself? Instead of just trying to buy new sneakers and looking fresh and all that, which I just think even massages, like, and women do that with other women to bond. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So they go, oh, with my girlfriend, oh, we're having a girls night. Boys night is going out, drinking at the club every time. I'm like, guys, can we do something for that? Can we go like, get it? It's like, we don't drink, but me and my friend, we don't drink somewhere. We don't, like, we can go eat somewhere that's bonding before going out. Or go mm-hmm. get a movie. Watch yeah. a movie together, just not with girls, just like guys. Go mm-hmm. play golf, putt mm-hmm. putt. Go, you know, connect. Go get a massage together. Why can't two guys go get, get the nails, you know, get a pedicure or manicure <laughs> together, right? And bond. I right. take it, like, for me, women are beating fruition because my mom was a single mom. That mm-hmm. um that raised us, so that was a big inspiration. So my mom is a, I have so much respect for her. She's like my hero. So mm-hmm. That's why I have so much respect for women. And I just see women just they're doing a lot. Like twenty twenty one, women are taking over. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> like I'm really killing it. Yeah, I'm 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 saying it right now. It's serious. That's why I, for me, I I take that from women. Men need to take more of a book from like lesson from women. Mm-hmm. That's why I feel like that's all I do. I just play. Uh-huh. Literally, literally, respect to the queens. I'm telling you, <laughs> love, it. love it. Okay, Tina, your question. Okay, so my question. I guess I, we really don't really know about Mayel and what, like, what made you come on here and talk. Um, so I want to know, like, what made you come on here and want to talk with us about about this stuff. Well. I saw Tina was very, um, she was very passionate and I was like, this is great. And obviously, personally, personally, I don't have a close, like, 
I wouldn't even know. I haven't, I don't know if it's been diagnosed, but obviously everyone goes through, I feel like everyone goes through a little bit of mental health. If it's like a breakdown of the negative thoughts that says, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. And obviously it's, I, I w- want to push that message to people just see me now and they think I didn't go like so I'm like there was a stage where I didn't have like this hair this look I went to the whole like where I looked like a junky guy where the dreads were growing and then my hair like I looked terrible before it got to here so it's like there's a there's an ugly before it gets to the beautiful and personally there's um I have family members that go through this as well and I personally saw it like have seen it which is it's different when you see it like you've seen them in like in mental hospitals and they have to like, they don't want to self put themselves in there. So you have to say, cause in Australia you can voluntarily put yourself in, in mental hospital or you get forced. And when you get forced, you have to go get court order to say he's good to get out. Mm-hmm. So I've personally witnessed this and I've seen it happen. Like that's where that's to be more like hit home deep. So that's why I really want to like, it's different when you see it happen than just like hear anything. It's, it's not really out there, but it, it is actually very common. So that's why I really want to build to that. Ooh, so I think very quickly jump off the kids that he's like. Yeah, no, you're good. Right, right. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, thank you so much for um having me. I hope we can do this again. Yeah. Yes. Love queen. We Love queen. Enjoy class. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 So you guys, um, Mayel had to go teach a class. Um, he is actually an instructor. So he actually was at class. Um, so he hopped on and um, helped us out a little bit um, just in sharing his opinion 